Well, hello, friends. It is Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. And today on the program, not only was Billy Lucci here, but Billy made fun of the Zoe Hour because OB <laughs> and myself, we sometimes go different directions. Zoe Hour. Oh, I get it. Was, that was yours. Good stick. Well played, my friend. We had John Harris on the show today. Uh, we talked about a lot of things. I liked our conversation about John Jones versus Tyson Fury, which I think you were, when we had talked about it at the gym, I think you said it depended, right? No, I was, I was just saying if, if Fury could land some punches on the way in, like, I don't think Jones has been hit necessarily like that. Not like that. that. No. But the problem is, it, he, it's just a matter of, I told you, I think he could beat him by doing nothing but kicking his leg. Right. Literally just stay at bay and, and deliver leg kicks, and the guy would go down inside yeah. of a round. Or that jump to the knee to the face. That one works. That would end it. But my, my thing with Jones is, you know, I saw a video of Nick Diaz, and I, I've met Nick, and he's about that tall, and I saw him take Fury down. They were, like, you know, sparring. Right. And, you know, and he took him down and outmaneuvered him and would have choked him out and, like, under a minute. John Jones is a different level of, of guy, yeah. too. So we, we talked about that. We talked some football stuff with him. The baseball bunch, a lot of baseball on the program today uh, following the so far. It's been a great run there at Hoover. And uh, Billy Lucci was on the show as well. That, Excited about the game today. Yeah, let's go get him. Watch uh, the rewind. Three During the regular season, AM pitching was allowing 9.4 hits per game. Okay, one right. inning. Yep. Right now they're averaging 3.3 hits per Per game. Man, that's like three times as good. Pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. good. Actually, that's, that's brilliant, actually. Regular season runs allowed 7.4 during the SEC tournament. Two. Wow. Walks are a little similar, unfortunately, because there was that one game. I'm yep. not going to remind you guys, but there, there was a bunch. SEC regular season 5.8 during the SEC tournament. Still lower, five. Okay. Strikeouts during the regular season. Pitching staff, 8.8. Strikeouts during the postseason, 9.3. You want the biggest one? ERA? I'm giving it to you, baby. I don't even think I said baby correctly. 7.4 runs per game. That was what they were giving up during the regular season. 1.29 in the SEC tournament. There Again, just go. three games, but these have been the most important games. Heck yeah. And, uh, you know, they... we've always felt like, yeah, gosh, if they could just get pretty... Average pitching, but they've been getting way above average pitching. Yeah, some spectacular pitching. If they can, if they can pitch anywhere in the same neighborhood, moving on. I mean, they they, they could they'll be a threat to not only get into the uh, playoffs, but be able to make some noise in advance. But wait, there's more. There's okay. more. Texas A&M shut out both Tennessee and South Carolina and Hoover this week. The only two times they have shut out an SEC team all season long. The only other time A&M has pitched a shutout this season was against. HCU on February the 28th. Houston Christian. Houston Christian, correct. Um, wow. And, and, you know, South Carolina is hosting, right? Or projected to be a host. Yep. And you shut them out. Tennessee, I don't think, is projected to be a host, but that was a team that's been, uh, at one time, was ranked like in the top five. So it's... An another stat that Ethan put together for us Texas AM averaged 1.4 wild pitches versus SEC teams in the regular season. In their SEC tournament games, they've had the big donut, huh? The big Zero. donut. The Big 12 fans got a chance to see him at Iowa State, and that's Xavier Hutchinson. Um, he was a guy that I think he was second or third in the country in catches, but he ran in the four, five, four, four, like mid four, five range. And so I remember seeing him at the Senior Bowl, and I remember saying to somebody, you know, he doesn't do anything at an elite level, but he does everything really well. Well, that resulted in him ending up in the sixth round and it's funny because my opinion on him sort of changed i talked to a buddy of mine uh, who covers the eagles up in philadelphia and i was kind of like you know xavier hutchinson and i started to say something he goes oh i love that guy and i was like really you love this guy i was like man maybe i need to take a better better look at him and so when i got three games from our film department and broke him down i was like boy he's he, he my buddy's right he's really good and so we got him in the sixth round so i'm excited about what xavier hutchinson can do but the key is going to be which of the two interior linemen do we draft, uh, Jared Patterson from Notre Dame or Juice Scruggs from Penn State. Which one of those two guys wins a center job uh, and turns an offensive line into being, hey, it's good at every point but center, into, hey, it's good across the board because they now have a center. Uh, and whichever rookie does that can solidify the offensive line. But 
kind of keeping it Aggie centric, the the success of that offensive line comes down really to one guy. Titus Howard and Larry Tunsil have proven themselves. Shaq Mason is one of the best still in the league. And whoever the rookie is at center, you know, we'll see. But what Kenyon Green does in year two, I think is going to tell the story of this offensive line. Um, and it's got to go from a tough year one, Kareem Jackson like year one in you know, 2010, to the next year, Kareem Jackson was one of the top five defensive players on the team in 2011 on a defense that was really, really good. That's what Kenyon Green has to do. He has to take that leap. He has to get his body healthy, which he's doing, uh, and then go out on the field and show what he really can do, which you guys saw, uh, obviously, for three years and then before that in, in recruiting. So he, to me, is the key, not a rookie, but a second-year guy that we really have to rely on this year for that offensive line to get to a different level. Yeah, I want you guys to react to this one. Wendy in College Station says, two versus three matters if you win the regional as a two and the other regional matched up with yours also has a two seed. At that point, you'll have a chance to host a super. Yeah, that's a good point. Sure. I, I mean, mean, that. I think when you're worried about things that happen outside of your control, though, like uh, that could happen. Yeah, I mean, a and could be a three and the four could win, just like we saw in 2017. And then you host a super. But um, I, I think that's a little, you know, looking way too far ahead kind of thing for me. Like a two and a three in a regional, your goal is to get out of the regional. Right. And then whether you got to go play at Olson Field at Bluebell Park or you're going to play in Seattle, Washington or Boston, Massachusetts or Coral Gables, Florida in a super, like you go wherever and you t- like you get in a super regional, it's a roll of the dice. And that's what the crazy thing I was thinking about this yesterday. Let's say AM had played to their preseason expectation all year. All year. Okay. The only difference that we'd be talking about right now is hosting throughout the postseason, potentially, right? Right. But if AM, so at this point, they've played their way into a regional as they've played so far this year. So whether they would play to a level that we had for them in the preseason or what they're currently at, if they get bounced in, in, in a regional, you could say, well, yeah, because we saw Tennessee get bounced. They were the best college baseball team in the last 20 years. Right. Like, it's a crapshoot in the postseason. So as good as your regular season is or as shaky as your regular season is, when you play in this league, like we talked about the other day, David, there's going to be 10 teams out of the SEC that make the postseason. How many of those can, theoretically, or are as good or good enough to go to Omaha? Oh. All 10 of them. Yes. So we're talking about a crapshoot here. Whether you're Florida, Arkansas, or you're South Carolina A and M, one and two in the league, Vanderbilt, or nine and ten in the league. It's just random. You can't advance very deep in this tournament with random kind of expecting random pitching performances. Now I don't think, you know, like if 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 any of these guys from this weekend I mean who who's had the roughest starting outing so far in the three games it's been Detmer Detmer it, and he was okay but yeah and if any of those well I mean he he didn't give up a lot of runs he didn't last very long at all I, I w- I'd like to see him last a little in his next start he needs to just for the sake of setting up the weekend right um, imagine if he pit, ever pitched six innings of three runs or less and what that would do for you if you were able to win that Friday game in a regional with Ashen back and 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 that bullpen being able to rest him in particular. So, uh no, I just think right now. I mean this this team, the, these starting pitchers, have got to feel so good about themselves, and I, I fully expect them to kind of sustain that momentum. Not quite to this level. That's insane what they're doing, but I kind of expect them to go out and and be confident throwers next weekend when they're going to need it most. And that is, this team is playing like a one seed. You know how that tournament is. And we learned mm-hmm. about it. We learned about it in, in basketball when the Aggies were certainly playing like, they were playing like a three seed down the stretch there. You know, and, and, and they ran in the wrong team in Penn State on the wrong night. So, you know, you go to a regional and, and one bad night from Detmer or, or, and or the bats, they run in the wrong pitcher, and the whole dynamic changes. So you just got to keep building confidence, keep going, and keep telling yourselves everything I just said, the opposite, which is, yeah, that could happen. But more likely right now would be A&M going into a regional and, and playing on Sunday with a chance to advance. And that home team – 
better pack the place out because they're going to have a real challenge on their hands. Johnny, two times. Tell them what to do. Sign up. Go to a good concert. Sit in the pit. Get down and dirty. Subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Like. Tag me in your concert videos. Whatever. Bad Bunny, 435 million in concert. Bye.